properties in general in Singapore and Hong Kong, you cannot compare them apple to apple because our home ownership rate is so much higher. Predicting the property market, right, is like trying to predict what cuts you will be dealt, right? A lot of private property owners, the move back to HDB is only really at the retirement stage. Yep. Most of the time. If they are doing okay, they have low mortgage, their median income is okay, their mindset is that I want to continue to own a private property mm. because I really have enjoyed mm. the appreciation over the years. Who wants bubble tea and who wants other version? Bubbles on the go. Can you, uh, next time my camera can have a filter version? Like a, like a dog face or like a cat, whiskers. Yeah. That's a single cam. By the way, today my credit card just got hacked, man. <laughs> I got eight transactions by PayPal. 801.80. Today when I opened up my bill, I was like, I got like 16 transactions that was hacked. You worth know, close to $10,000. You know what you need to sign up for? The Don't ones check. that like, uh, as long as there's a one cent transaction on your card, they send you an SMS. Oh, is this yeah. such a thing? So you should sign up for that. So I was sleeping one day. Then after that, I heard my phone ding. Then I woke up, right? Gonna I have. had like 800 plus dollars. I think like four transactions by TikTok. So I immediately called the bank and they seized the card. And well, they'll give you a credit Send me like, the app, please. No, just go through your app. Then you can say the notification for a transaction limit uh, set as 0 0.01 cent. 0 0.01 dollars lah. Oh. Yeah. So anytime you use your credit card, it will send you an SMS. Oh. Yeah, yeah. It's like, let me show you how it looks like. I, I, I look like I'm advertising for the bank. Sure, sure, sure. Welcome to the MAS NT scam hotline. Okay, please share with our audience how do we do this. So you can either call into the bank or you can uh, go through your app, your iBanking app. And then you see, so like just now I just bought a sandwich. A transaction of $3.50 was made with your UOB card. Fantastic. Yeah. I'll do that. We're wasting the bank's resources to send an SMS for a $3 it's transaction. It's automated now. Yeah, it, there's a cost to it. Yeah the bank's cost. Thanks for letting okay. the audience know that you have bought a wonderful sandwich <laughs> yes. for the shoot. <laughs> a turkey and ham sandwich from really? the vending machine. Okay, we need to talk about this very first. And uh, yes. today is back with home team. And of course, we have Lyndon in the house. Hi, everyone. <laughs> Where is nice this to meet you. home team? <laughs> <laughs> it's like home team NS. <laughs> It's the home team. <laughs> uh. Okay. Let's talk about this first. Uh, it's been about, about a month since we talked about. Hey, is anybody manning the camp? <laughs> Because I don't know. Okay, again. Yeah. All right. So, hi, everyone. Welcome back to our NOTG banter. So, we have had two previous episodes. We interviewed George Go as well as uh, one of our clients, Javin and Joanne. Yeah, hope you enjoyed that two episodes. So, today we're going to talk everything about news because there's been so many property news in the past July. And this is the very first one, which... It's actually quite a big uh, research that uh, was concluded from, uh, what is it? Let me have a look at this report. And uh, I was just going through this report. I think it's, it's done so well. Urban Land Institute, 2023 ULI Asia Pacific Home Attainability Index. So um, they come up with a couple of great charts as well as tables. And uh, I think we just want to run through this. Maybe Linda, give us a rundown. Of what is this article talking about? So mainly this article is talking about how how the home prices has increased significantly, especially in the private sector. I think over the last three years, there was a jump of close to 20 over odd percent uh, for the private sector. So is starting out from a HDB or BTO really able to what whatever you all have been talking about, can you build enough gold and pot to make the down payment for your next private property right. in the next five years? So like I bought now uh, my BTO, am I going to be able to make what? In the five years, I think private property is going to cross close to the two million mark. Hey, share with us your BTO, sorry. Okay, okay. So, <laughs> so, so okay, you just got keys, right? Yes, I just got my keys. Okay, how much you bought a BTO last time? I bought it for 338,000 back in 2017. Where? Sengkang. Uh, four or five room? Four room. 320 over thousand, huh? 338. 338, okay. So, you waited technically six years. Yes. Was it because of COVID? It was because of COVID. I, I don't you, know. You applied in 2017. Yeah. 
And then you just collected your yep. Six years. Yep. Six oh, plus. So la, there six was months. a delay. But because you know, last time they always say like, oh, okay, BTO maybe take about three, four years to build. Yeah. So we thought we would get it in like maybe 2020, 2021. Yeah. But because of COVID, they delayed another two more years. La. Okay. So have you went through an ROM and wedding already? Yeah. Went through it. I got married over a span of one and a half years. Got kids already. How did that happen? COVID. Why is it one and a half years? No, no. So, so we selected the date. Okay. Why is your wedding so long? <laughs> no. <laughs> It's all because of COVID. So we selected the date. We wanted to get married on the 10th of October, 2020. Okay. So 10, 10, 20. Yi Ling, Yi Ling. Okay. So with that, uh, we still decided to go ahead with the church ceremony. But it was a very sad case because we only could invite Oh, limited packs. numbers. Okay, yeah. okay. So we had a church ceremony on 10, 10. Then we waited a while because we needed for the restrictions to ease up from two people become three people become five people so that we can have the bridal party. Mm. So then we had our tea ceremony and gate crash in 2021 of February. So it was like in phases la. Yes. Okay. Then and we had our banquet at the end of the year of 2021. But by the time everything opened already? Uh, not yet la. Okay. It was like 250 packs only. Right. Congrats by the way. So you just got your keys. Yep. Are you doing renovation now? Yes, I'm doing renovation. Okay, share with us a calculation. That time, I remember vaguely you shared with us some calculation and you were saying that if you can repeat the cycle, you will have went for a resale. <clears throat> Why? Okay, so- How does the calculation work? So I think the calculation is this. If you just rule of thumb, if you are looking like, you wrong, if you are looking for a four-room newly MOP flat, uh, say back in 2022, 2021, four-room newly MOP, nicely renovated, how much do you think you'll pay? Newly renovated. Yes. Uh, just MOP. I think yeah. probably 500,000. 500,000, right? So let's say if that was my scenario. Okay, fast forward 2023, how much will you pay? Now it's about 600,000. Closer to the 600 range. Uh. Okay, so so it's about 100,000 increase. So if I bought my at 338, okay, and I spend say about $50,000 on a on my renovation. I'm not even talking about appliances and all that yet. Okay, let's round it up to a round figure of 400,000, right? Okay, so the difference, right, is 200,000. But the fact is that the government now is giving- The difference from 400K to today 600K. Correct. Okay. So 400K to today 600K. The difference is 200,000. Mm -hmm. The fact that if you buy any resale, if you are a first timer, la, if you buy any resale, four room and below, you're getting 80,000. Okay, and if you stay within 4K of your parents, you get 20,000. So that's 100K. Grants. Yes. Right. So in essence, your 600K unit has become 500K. Mm. So this 100K, right, is talking about maybe your fittings, you know, ceiling fans, lights, uh, and all this kind of thing. It adds up to a certain amount. I say easily maybe about 20,000. Mm. Okay. you baller. Like, that's why it's 20,000. No. You will be stunned by how expensive things are. Like I just got my electrician quote today. Mm. It's 4.5K. Mm. And this just So how much in total will you spend for your... your I think I'm spending a good. Is it close to 100k? Close. Okay, because aircon, you're yes. putting wardrobes, kitchen cabinets, lights. Mm. Because flooring is done for you. I didn't uh, take the flooring. Oh, okay. Yeah, the flooring yeah. wasn't very nice. Okay, then your TV console plus furniture and yes. appliances, all these are about 100,000. So 100, that means your true cost is 338 plus 100. Yes. Okay, but the 100 is cash. Correct. So that's about 438 versus? Versus 600, mm. which you can pay by CPF. Because majority of the time, like you always say, you go for a newer MOP is because you want to reduce the cost or the possibility of COV. Because usually the majority of the time, the COV would, the valuation would be able to match the selling price because it's new, a lot of transactions and all that kind of thing. Mm. Yeah. So the so what I'm talking about is that actually your true cost is 438 and that's inclusive of 100K renovation Correct. cash, but this is 500,000 after lessing of the 100K grant, but yep. No need to come up cash at all if there's no COV because the Renault is like, everything is new. Yep. Okay, no, uh, I, I remember you, you talk about the fact that- And um, you're trading off time. Yes, time, right? Six, seven years. But yes. you also talk about the fact that uh, you would go for like a brand new MOP one. Yes. Because you want to take advantage of like everything. You want to take everything. Yeah, I want to take everything. And I, I want to take whatever they have. Because you know, first time home buyers, they are very emotional. Like like me, I, I, I cannot upsell by, by the- the people at the store. Like, you know, your first home, hey, you should get this one, it's better. Then pump, wow, LG art cool. Then you pay like five, six thousand dollars for the aircon already. Right. Then, wow, Ariston heater and all that kind of thing. So 
when you go for newly five years, uh, you know that the products are more or less are going to be good one. Mm. No one's going to like scrimp and save on like, I built one aircon here. I don't build in the living room. Majority of the time, it's all, they spend a lot of time and effort into it. Uh. So you hunt for all the fully renovated houses? Yes, I would. Then just take every, even if the owner want to leave any furniture behind. Correct, you just I'll take. just take. What's come to us, just carousel it. Mm. Mm. I think basically what Linden say is like the, the, the sweet spot is probably if you were to redo his decision, he will buy a resale flat, fire MOP because you have the longest run in terms of lease, generally in terms of architecture, facade and all that, it is new. As well as the owner's renovation will still be in probably quite pristine condition yep. and you don't need to spend your time and costing on the renovation. Plus, likely you don't have much cash flow valuation mm. and your MOP is only five years, which allow you to save a lot of time in terms of this real estate journey like to, let's say, go into the private property market, right? Yep. Yeah. So why I'm saying this uh, is because I also had, still have a lot of friends. Uh. Um, I'm 31. I still have a lot of friends that are still trying to ballot for BTOs. Okay. And can you imagine if they have to wait another four years, then five years, then an MOP, by the time they sell, they move into the private property, it's 40 years old. Yeah. And you always say what? Your prime age is always... 25 to 40 because of your loan <laughs> ratio and all that kind of thing. You like to quote me, yeah? <laughs> 30 or 45, like, 30 or 45, 45 is usually yes. like the key prime. Yes. You're like, yeah? You are still in your prime. I'm still in my prime, but can you imagine those who start later, like those who are trying to ballot? Mm. I've known friends who have ballot for 14 times and unsuccessful. Mm. So I was just looking at the, because we were preparing for an, a previous podcast. So I was just looking at the ratio. It has drastically increased. Like my time, the ratio was like maybe 2.1 is crazy. Right? Now you have like eight. Coven was what, 20, 20 something? Mm. So the ratio is, I think just have to break the stigma. La. Your, um, what was your queue number back then? Oh, my queue number with uh, proximity. Uh. Yeah. So if you are with, with the proximity, you get additional ballot. Right. Uh, I got 320 something out of 700 plus. Was that near the MRT? No, far. Uh, which no. part of Sengkang? Uh, I'm all the way at Riverview side. So I'm facing Lorong Halus. Lorong? Oh, the one by the, by the sea, park yes. connector. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, that's nice. that's nice. Okay. So I can see MBS if I poke my head out and look like that. <laughs> no. Okay, <laughs> talk about the poke your head out thing. The stack facing one. Yes. What was your mistake with the stack okay. facing? So when I got my keys excitedly, right? I was so happy eh, that I got my keys because I was studying <laughs> the stack plan even as an agent, right? Then, after that, I look at the brochure. I started set plan. Okay, okay, wow. Okay, this actually looks like the best tech. No, no but that time you were not a realtor facing. yet, ma. Yeah, yeah. But you know, when I, after I became a realtor, I had to reassure myself that I did a good choice. Right? Okay. Yeah. So but I, you also can't change, right? Yeah, I also can't change. La, but okay. I reassured myself, okay, got no west sun. Okay, facing unblocked. Looks quite far away from the highway and all that kind of thing. I tried to study it like really closely. Then the day came, 26 <laughs> July, I collected my keys. I went up. The moment I hit, my floor level, the, the lift door open, I heard because the blocks are positioned in a way that they bounce the highway noise off the blocks and then into my lift lobby. Oh my goodness. Okay. So that's one. So lucky. You don't need to pay money for F1 race. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you went, the more you went there, you close the door, it's okay. Lah. Yeah, yeah. But so lucky I'm the furthest away from the lift lobby. Okay. Okay. Then when I open my window, my balcony door, and then I can hear the white noise out there. You know, it, it, it's, you, you can, if you really listen for it, you can hear. Okay. And then I face a bit of the highway, but I face a bit of the unblocked view also. Okay. But then when I went back to the lift lobby, I start looking out from my balcony at other people's stack. And I'm like, eh, actually I read the step blank wrong. Top floor is actually 18th floor, not 16th floor. <laughs> yeah, okay. because apparently level 17 and level 18, they are point blocks. Okay. Yeah, it's just that they don't have the extension out. I yeah. think it's for water tank and all that kind of thing. So right. these kind of kind of small things that you would no, never- then your view was like- My view is not directly facing MBS. Oh, okay. Yeah. So you have to like- I have to peep my head out like that. I mean, it's good like, at least you get to have a sneak peek. Right? How many houses <laughs> can get to, for you to tilt? to get an MBS view. Okay. Right? okay. Anyway, <laughs> but congrats. Can, can, can I just maybe share something sure. to the audience, right? Because you all mentioned about like the 100K in terms of renovation, right? And of course, with all this, like, you know, like renovation talk show that you see on social, social media and all that stuff. Yeah. I, I, I personally would think that, of course, I like, you know, like if you are, when you are doing renovation for your home, right? Just really be mindful 
in terms of like, you know, like your renovation budget. Because one of the few things that I always share uh, with clients is that like, think of renovation in this way that you don't need to invest like all your 100K up kind of renovation. Reason is because probably you will only stay here for five years. That's mm. number one. Don't renovate as though like this is your forever home that you want the best fittings. <laughs> Second thing is a lot of times nowadays with uh, things like choosing the right lighting, wallpaper, this could dramatically change the ambience of your place. You no mm. longer need like very nice like, pantry and all that stuff. And uh, a lot of times choosing the right furniture pieces can really help you to build the team of the home. And these furniture pieces can be easily brought over to your next home. Mm. And then it's not like a sunken cost that is fixed uh, to the place. And the other thing to note is when it comes to renovation, sometimes, you know, like renovation uh, costs that you invest in, right? The question to ask is, is it translatable to your future buyers or not? Sometimes I go to houses, right? And I see, well, even though I understand that the homeowners, you know, like did a lot of renovation, I represented a buyer. I, will, I, I know that all this renovation doesn't translate to my buyers and they will have to spend money to tear down. So, so there is a, you know, a misalignment in terms of what sellers perceive as value in terms of renovation mm. versus what buyers will perceive, right? So you will know that this renovation is not going to translate in terms of strong higher selling points. So I really think to be careful. Anyway, renovation loan, each person can only take $30,000. $30, and if you are paying 100K in cash for renovation, then why not consider using this 100K mm. to potentially increase the down payment? Then you can go for a prior mm. property right from the start, which potentially have like a higher runway. So I think- it this seems are, like you wrong is telling me I spent too much on my rent. But let okay, me make it clear. Actually, renovation, renovation was, was 50 only. Okay. Uh, plus appliances and all that. Lah. Plus fittings, plus, you know. Uh. Actually, if you look at, okay, sometimes we just think about renovation. Okay, renovation, like, example, 100,000. But you haven't added your appliances, right? Like your oven, your microwave, your hood hop and everything. Plus, 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 plus icon is 150,000. Okay, you just imagine. Even if I would just take hundred thousand versus the actual price of the home at five hundred thousand, it's twenty percent. That's too mm. high. Yeah, twenty percent is very high. And sometimes, for like example, when I look at certain like executive masonets, um, one million, right? Renovate everything, two hundred thousand plus mm. appliances, two hundred fifty is one point two five. Two hundred fifty thousand against that is twenty five percent of yeah. the total mm. cost, which is actually very high. Uh, just now you mentioned one point. Sometimes it's about selecting the right finishes. Have a look at this home. <laughs> Don't look at the price, ah. Uh. Okay. You, usually, <laughs> I usually I give a ballpark. Uh, keep within a ten percent, ten percent. Yeah. Uh, of your property purchase value, that would right. be great. But this of is course, renovation, right? Bit, like. Yeah. Uh, this is okay. usually I consider renovation and fittings together. Cause usually in terms of fittings wise, uh, what are some of fittings that you will choose? Toilet bowl, basin, some mm. of the ovens, cooker, hot hood. Uh, like you know how expensive toilet bowls are now. <laughs> toilet bowl, of course, it can range to a few thousand dollars. Same I just changed, thing. I just changed five Magnum, toilet bowls right? at home. Magnum, right? Yeah. I also bought Magnum. So Same I thing. went with the one with the bidet on. Yeah, yeah Magnum bidet. Yeah, yeah. So you added $160 for the bidet on top of your $590 <laughs> something dollars. Very precise, bro. Yeah. I, don't, I just, I just love it. Like you are okay. very no, no, entertaining. I want, this. I want to show you this. Do you think it's nice? Yeah. Not right. bad. La. Okay. Not bad. This home uh, is tenanted. I mean, talented, you can't it's, do any renovation. It's empty, like, there's not much fixture. It's, 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 all, it's all furniture. Mm -hmm. and but the paint. choice of the furniture, you just hang a couple of art on the wall. Yeah. Fantastic. It looks beautiful. I, I went to the actual place to film the home tour. The feeling is is great. It's, it's cozy, right? Very cozy, just like mm. Balinese Resort. So actually, yeah. if you play around, and furniture you can bring away. Okay, so this is actually for, I think, families that are starting out. Mm. You want to manage your cash position a little bit more prudently. So, mm. so don't need to like over invest in too many wall fi fixtures. And actually sometimes like TV console is a waste of money. Mm. Yeah. You can just put in, buy a nice TV console that is not fixed to the wall. You don't need that wall feature. Yeah. Put in a TV with a stand. And Nowadays you are moving towards projector. Just to put like it in a disclaimer. You don't even need to have a TV console. <laughs> <laughs> a disclaimer, I don't have a TV console. Huh? So actually, mine is just a wall. Okay. That's a good choice. Actually, next choice. year we can all change to Vision, uh, the, the Apple Vision Pro and we don't even need a projector. Yeah, you, just like, you know, I like, just, <laughs> like, it's like, what the minority like report? Yeah, like yeah, my, my friend report, report, report. Yes. you just like, oh. You need a white zoom wall. Zoom in, zoom out. <laughs> yeah, just white wall. You need a white wall. Okay, come, let's move to the next topic. This article was actually based off uh, the report that we mentioned, which is... Um, the 2023 ULI Asia Pacific Home Att Attainability Index. So inside, there's actually a couple of very good, interesting points. Of course, one of the, the portions talk about home ownership rate. Uh, and this home ownership 
rate actually is very consistent that on what we have always been talking about. But I think what is good is that they have included a lot of major CTs here. And um, if you were to read the report, they talk about the fact that there are certain cities that are called gateway cities. That means people um, uh, pass through these cities as a gateway to like the major ones. So the, there's a transition in terms of like migration, going to work and all this kind of stuff. Singapore still remains as 89.3%, but there's of course this article that came up with the headlines, uh, which is this part here. So we are officially more expensive than Hong Kong. What do you guys think about this? In terms of uh, the median housing price, like as for per 2022, property. right? For yeah. private properties. Median is at 1.2 versus Hong Kong median at 1.15. 1. 1. Yeah. What are the top process? And then you have a look at the rest of the world. Okay, of course, uh, in the report, it's very fair. Look at what they indicated. They yeah. indicated Singapore HDB. They also complemented Singapore on the fact that- In the, uh, the public housing system. From right? 1967, uh, government implemented this so that we have 90% home ownership rate. Mm. So they actually like sort of like commented that this is like a great move by mm. the government. This was actually also the main difference as uh, for Singapore compared to Hong Kong. Yeah, because yeah. like for their public housing, that it is more for like rental. Yeah. And then you have a uh, straighter income limits. And I also understand from my Hong Kong friends, uh, sometimes to even just rent a unit, the waiting time could be five years. Yeah. Like to do the public rental. Correct. Yeah. So uh, what are your thoughts in five years time? Of course, this is like the Singapore private median and they take into account uh, new launch and resale. But if you talk mm. about new launch, it's already averagely about $2 million now. Uh, I think $2 million is assuming that it is a three bidder. I mean, like to be fair, but of course, uh, if we do not sort of like, you know, like just focusing on like a three bidder, if we include one bidder, two bid one bar, two bid two bar as well, I the think the overall drop, median yeah. definitely will be more affordable. Okay, maybe let's take a three bidder, like resale and new launch. You know, it's about two mil. Resale averagely probably about 1.5, uh, 6. You can still get in the OCR region. Uh. Yeah. So five years later, based on this report, what do you think will be our projection? And do you think that uh, it's going to be more unattainable? Because in this article, they talk about a chasm also mm. for like, inequality, if let's say somebody would want to move up to private property in a couple of years time, they actually mentioned about uh, a couple that was thinking about moving to private in future, but they think that it's going to be very difficult already. Mm. What are the thought process? My take is that, I think the first thing is that we have to have a disclaimer that properties in general in Singapore and Hong Kong, it's, you cannot compare them apple to apple because our home ownership rate is so much higher. Mm. A lot of people in Hong Kong, they still rent. So if we factor down to the Singapore affordability for HDBs, definitely those will always stay affordable. Uh, you definitely can buy it with a median income if you are family. But sad case for uh, for me, for those people that are still climbing the property ladder and all, the, the wealth gap, mm. the wealth chasm is just going to further increase and increase. Because if you're, I feel that if the fact, if you're not in a private property position now, mm it's going to be so much harder to enter in the future. Mm. And if you hope that your HDB can give you that leverage over, the government can just release more HDBs and BTOs uh, with the lease buyback scheme happening so much more, the take-up rate is so much more, they have more flexibility with whatever they can supply into the affordable. But the private, they are just going to leave it, how they say it, free for all, FFA. So it would just be, it would just be trading and trading and trading and people who own it, they can own the next one and next one and next one. But to enter it is a totally different ball game. Mm. That's how I feel. Right. What do you think, Iro? I have a slightly different point of view. I think like overall, I understand that maybe uh many people would, would, would think that number one, the, the prior properties pricing and HDB pricing will open up in terms of like a gap portion, right? So, uh, generally, I think like the private property market and the HDB market is quite interrelated. Mm. From an overall index standpoint, I unlikely to see like uh, the chasm opening up indefinitely. If we were to just look at, of course, you know, like uh, the last two years, in fact, actually in the property price, like, the gap is closing up. So of course, the highest was between 2017 all the way until 2019 first half. You can show the our cooling measure chart, right? And after that, you can see that the 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 chasm, this portion actually closed up between the private property and HDB. Right. Rationale is because all these things are quite interlinked because 
a lot of times, right, uh, we have the upstream for private property prices to go up, right? HDB pricing must go up. Mm. When HDB pricing mm. go up, right, it allows people to upgrade, right? So if we can see that actually uh, in the last like uh, 2014 era all the way until 2017, why did our private property prices didn't do so well? Number one, because of cooling measures, the total debt servicing, servicing ratio has you know, like eliminated some people that cannot participate in the property market. So the volume of transactions came down, but also because uh, government took a stand to actually introduce a lot of supply and mm-hmm. HDB prices started climbing down. So I always ask, if your resale property, HDB never make money, it's very hard for this person to pull the plug, take the loss and want to upgrade to a private property. Yeah, right. Agree. So you can see that these last three years, when HDB pricing, resale pricing went up, right? It is a stimulus for all these people to actually participate in the private property market because whether you own a resale HDB, you finally recovered from the drop. If you know, like from if you buy in 2011, 2012, you have already made back uh, to reach back the 2013 peak and then you exceeded beyond. And BTO people, of course, usually you already have profited. So this allows the down payment to move up. And also in our webinar, we also measure, you know, like for the last over 10 over years, what is the median pricing of forum flats. And mm. we also uh, analyze, right, from the uh, URA standpoint in terms of research, right, in terms of the different uh, regions, for example, your OCR, outside Central Asia, your East, Northeast, Northwest kind of properties, as well as your rest of Central Asian properties. We realize that, okay, in terms of what we call like multiple, meaning that I see the median pricing three beta in this different region, mm. as compared to, let's say, a forum flat in the same region, you realize that actually in terms of the multiple effect, right? For RCR and CCR location, it is the same multiple. So for example, today I stay in a central forum flat and I want to upgrade to a CCR, let's say 950 square feet to 1002 square feet kind of sizing. It will be about 3.5 times my HDB pricing. Mm. And this is quite consistent over the last five years. If today I'm in an RCR, it will take me about 2.5 2.5 times my HDB flat. If I stay from a century, I upgrade to a RCR 3 beta, which is also quite consistent for the last five years. But if you realize that if you look at OCR, where you are in the Eastern region, North, Northeast region, North region or Western region, right? You can see actually the price multiple has actually uh, shrunk in some areas. So Western region is shrunk. Uh, Northeast region, sorry, North region is also shrunk. Northeastern region shrunk by a little bit and East region was consistent. So what it means is relatively speaking, mm. because of the boost in HDB pricing, actually it is easier to upgrade, even though yes, all prices did increase. La. So can, uh, can, can I chime in here? Of course you can yes. chime in. <laughs> so, so I just want to chime in here. So I, I, I was just reading the news and I was thinking what, what actually is the news and all these haters and like, you know, how it's always very misguided. Yes. So I was just thinking with, Private property is increasing. We yeah. have to think, okay, who are the people buying? Let, mm. let, let's say, who are the people buying now? So they must have MOP. Mm. They must have waited. So let's say their runway is that when they bought the BTO, it is 10 years ago. Mm-hmm. Correct. So in 2013. Yep. Correct. That mm. now, after they wait for it to build, after they wait for it to MOP, they exit. Mm. Of course, their, their wealth accumulation is so much more now. Mm. So, but if it's me for the case now, the news that will appear, right, it is in the next five years. Yep. We are talking about 2028. Yep. So, even though if I were to sell, I'm very happy if, if it goes according to your way. If I can sell at seven, eight hundred thousand, yeah. I will be very happy. And I think then I can enter into a private property that maybe costs 1.5, 1.6 million. I think it is very likely that assuming things keep pace from a typical inflation standpoint, your BTO five years later, it will not be 600K really. It will probably be closer to 700,000. So that helps you to shave off, you know, like, because it's, it's not logical to think that HGV price is stagnant and then private property price just go up continuously yes, for like yes, a yes. five-year period. Of course, of course. It, it could like, you know, like one run up faster, but eventually something has to happen because there is a quite an interlinking portion one for like these two portions. Even though, yes, uh, HDB government has the most control because they can, number one, launch in the sense that uh, unlimited really supply. supply like, really you know? supply. Because they are like, from like they from the land, they can decide 
uh-huh. which land plot to release. Correct, correct. They can decide, you know, like whether to build, uh, what is the unit mix. Mm. They can decide, most importantly, the pricing. Of course. Right? So if they were to pack to a median pricing, median income pricing, right? Then in theory, they are able to uh, indirectly have some control as compared to resale HDB pricing. Because it wouldn't make sense if BTO price launched the same, you only expect HDB resale price to keep climbing on. Okay. It wouldn't make sense, right? So indirectly, there is quite a full control over making the HDB segment continue to be affordable. Uh-huh. The only thing that uh, we lost control mainly was definitely during COVID because construction, all these things are beyond control. And for the prior property market segment, I would say that like uh, generally, there is... I wouldn't say that it's totally like a, a like a free market la, because uh-huh. uh, the developer's profit margin and the business strategy will determine that the pricing cannot be un- unpalatable. Un- unpalatable from a business point of view. Yep. Because if not like all developers, you know what will be going bust. Correct, correct. Yeah. So 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 I, I I agree. I hope like we all feel that HDB prices now are a bit high, right? 600 k 700 k for four room HDB. Mm. It's slightly high already. Mm. I I would be very happy if I can sell mine for like seven, 800K even. Yeah. Then of course, I would then be able to match up to the price increase. But because right now, uh, people who are buying into this, right? I feel it's hitting a, a quantum cap already. Mm. It's, they're, they're, they're really squeezing already. And I'm talking about those that maybe bought in 2013. Uh, like I have some clients that upgraded to 1.3, 1.4 million EC and all that kind of thing. Yes, uh, it's a bit taxing for them when they see the mortgage amount that they have to pay. It's a big shock to them, really. But can mm-hmm. you imagine if it's at two million? We're mm. talking close to actually, it's okay. Everything is in a relative perspective. Brescia is because right, even though it is easy to always look at property prices going up. But we want to know that actually income is also growing up. So if we look at income <laughs> statistics wise, uh, I mean like to, let's say, you know, like I think like most of the people who are buying the private property segment, right, will belong to that 15%, I mean the highest 15% uh-huh. carry in terms of yep. income, right? So actually if we look at household income, the latest statistics is 16% of the population has a household income of above 20,000 and over. Mm-hmm. And we mentioned that before that, by right, the minimum income required to get a $2 million home 20, based on 55, no, no, based on 55% total debt servicing ratio rate is about just under 14,000. No, but, but if you want it to be, wait, 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 wait. if you want it to be very, very comfortable, then it will be $20,000, mm. right? Assuming that this is for own stay, mm-hmm. right? So basically in short is that like the income has been increasing dramatically also. So that's why I think that over overall, because history pricing is increasing, income is increasing. So I feel that the private property pricing uh, is sustainable. Everything will sort of like have uh, some sort of pacing. La. If balance, income la. slows, if HG pricing slows, then of course, overall property price index is not going to be up 25.9% over the last three years, like what mm-hmm. we have uh, measured. But in the pockets of the segments, you can potentially find good deals that you can park as part of your wealth building journey. La. <laughs> <laughs> you know that's how it works. <laughs> No, no, I'm not laughing about this. <laughs> I'm laughing about it. <laughs> I'm, 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 no, I was hearing about both of your bantering. And <laughs> no, hey, actually, you don't have to agree with me wrong on it. No, 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 no. no. I, 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 I don't agree. I still hold my stand. Okay, but okay. I have to respect his uh, of course, of outlook course, of course, on the. Of course, of course. Okay, so, so let, me, let, me, let me sum it up. Huh? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> correct, correct me if I'm wrong. Okay, but anyway, I have a different theory. Okay. okay. So it seems to me that Yurong's conclusion is that Yurong feel that the HGV market is still the base and fundamental reason of why prior property shift up, mm. right? And you feel that it will always be like a foundation because 70 over percent of um, residents live and own a HGV property. Mm. Oh, oh, of and course, I, I think there's another thing. Of course, it the, HGV pricing is just one portion. Mm. But because of how investments are more easier to do, I would say that generally there's two other components. One, property prices that went out over the last three years, number one, there is a funnel because of there is increase in terms of the equity market. Right? So generally, if we see, Mm. number one, why did we see like a strong rise in prices in 2021? Because in 2020, there was a strong rise in prices in the equity market. Right? And if let's say you have profited from the equity market or maybe you are more... uh, 
how to say like uh, your risk profile is higher you yeah. take part in cryptocurrency yeah. and then you will funnel some of these profits to a safer asset class so that is another thing and of course the third thing is how the world overall we are printing more and more money currency this will be the three things lah. of course maybe one way that potentially it delinks is uh, we assume that uh the, the, the printing of money or like, you know, like a quantitative easing in whatever form mm. continues. And then that's where we can see that maybe has a more sustainable long-term, di- you know, like a, a, a chasm between the HDB segment and the private property segment. And yeah. of course, the fourth thing is population. Mm. Yeah, which of course, it depends on ABSD ruling and all your kind of stuff. Okay, your point of view is what? Do you, do you think that it will delink? It will delink to a certain point. Like, it's similar. It's similar. But I feel that in private property market, it will just reach to a point that people just say, eh, hey, actually, I really cannot afford. Mm. Yeah. So so it will be that gap. So then the people that will have to want to buy into the private property will be us that maybe hey, I have to work a bit more harder. Maybe instead of five years, I need to, on the 10 year, 12 year, then I can save enough to mm. go into it. Mm. Because right now it's people who have who have uh, done the five years and then they can already go into it. Mm. So for, for me, it will delink in a sense, but the private property, because it's always shown that it is still the strongest in local demand. So it's always local who are buying it. It's not foreigners or what. So we're not priced out. Mm. It's just that we reach to a point that, eh, I cannot, I cannot afford it. Then like maybe the point may be 2.5 million. Maybe the point may be 3 million. That it just means that I'll have to work longer. I'll have to stay in my HDB longer than I can save enough or work hard enough, make my money work for me before I can enter into the property market. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that, that's my dealing in a sense. La. Oh, okay. It okay. won't go like, private property won't go like five, six, seven million like in, in the Hong Kong sense la, where the, only the top 1% okay. can own it. I think that, uh, thanks, thanks, Linda. Thanks, Yuron. I think that the, this is my own forecast. I think what's going to happen is, is like this. The rationale is because of uh, multi-fold theory. And I think based on how things are going, it's going to look very likely to be like this. So this uh, is going to HDB. Okay, I seriously think that there'll be a delink because of a few key elements. Okay, now uh, our chart looks like this. They seem pretty like uh together la, yeah. like parallel three point five right? times gap la. yeah i mean like uh, like they seem pretty parallel now right i think landed were dealing la. <laughs> okay <laughs> if we want to further split into the prior property market la. <laughs> okay landed uh definitely were dealing because like um there's only i mean it's such a small percentage right seventy three thousand units so basically okay maybe just for the context of our audience if uh, they have not seen our webinars before we'll talk about all this stuff right we always talk about demand supply and stuff. Okay, so here- 350,000. Yeah. Then here- 1.2 million. So we're talking about the number of units available. All the residential properties in Singapore are basically 1.2 million, 350. And also we have to take into consideration this 350, right? Right now, at this point in time, close to 260,000 are by Singaporeans. Mm. 90K are by foreigners and companies PR. and PR. So. This is by other people who will never sell already in the sense that if they can continue to hold, they will not sell because they all bought before the 60% APSD was implemented. Now, if this 90,000 owners that, these 90,000 units are owned by owners that have bought um, before the latest 27 April cooling measures, there's no incentive for them to sell. They sell, they have to buy back at 60% APSD. So, so basically you are talking about this 260,000 having more probability of roving in the market. Okay. I think in future, this is going to look like this. Okay. Uh, <laughs> you want to curve okay, it? What timeline are we talking Do you want to curve it or? Okay. Me, uh, I'm actually, uh, my timeline is pretty short in terms that I think five years time will look like this. Okay. Let me show you. So I, I think we should have a, like a, Prediction. I think no, we, no. We I think we should have like lock no, it in no, a box and then we open like a, it in like five years. Real right? banter episode. Like <laughs> they were saying that I should be like the moderator. Then we will have two cams. Then people are like <laughs> debating and stuff like that, talking about stuff. Okay, so later maybe we should come up with a topic. Okay, the reason is because like this. Ah, uh, just look at all the pricing movement right now that's happening in the market. New launches is at a new high. Mm. Right. You want to get a three beta, two million dollars above. PSF two thousand plus. Mm. Everything is two thousand plus. Right. 
people will naturally fall back to the resale market. Now the resale market is the cream of the crop selection. It's like, mm. that's my only thing that I can buy now. Mm. Because I will just go and hunt for all the three betas that is like one over a million, 1. 1.6, 1. 1.5, 1.4 in the OCR region. I will just snap up everything. Mm. We, if I need four betas, I'll just hunt for like two over a million one, quickly snap up size. Even if it's 99, it's left 70 plus 80 years, I'll just snap up for the size of it because that's the only thing I can afford now. So what I think what's going to happen is like this. The resale will move up in five years. In mm. I, I think in three years. Just give it three years. Everything will be at a new high, okay? And what's going to happen is that all these people that exited from the existing resale condo, they all bought in the past. They're going to have equity that is built up because their mortgage will, will, will decrease mm. and then they can exit. Mm. And what are they going to buy next? Naturally. Downgrade to HDB. Okay. Wait 15 months. Lah, okay. Mm. Right. If not, but, the, but they will naturally see that government is increasing the supply so much. And let me share with you, a lot of private property owners, the move back to HDB is only really at the retirement stage. Yep. Most of the time. If they are doing okay, they have low mortgage, their median income is okay. They usually, their mindset is that I want to continue to own a prior property mm. because I really have enjoyed mm. the appreciation over the years, right? Yeah, own another one or like get a bigger private property or go in with a lender if possible. Yeah, so they will take this equity to go buy something else and they will just roll around within this condo market or they might go into landed. And I think this is going to like detach further and further away. So maybe in three years time, right? We will be looking at like a resale entry three beta OCR Likely minimum 1.8 million already. And then all the new, okay, new launch, my own observation is that price is going to be pretty consistent mm. because uh, I the agree. Is too close. Lah. Yeah, you cannot go up too high, yeah. right? Mm. People cannot afford. When this happens, then that will set the stage for the next lick. Uh, of course, I don't know whether it will go out in perpetuity, but it is very true. People will cash out from equity market cryptocurrency mm. market and all this, they will funnel their funds into, and they can only funnel into this. They cannot funnel into landed. They cannot funnel into HDB if they're not Singaporean. If they're Singaporean, then they'll continue to funnel into these two things. Mm. So I think there's a high chance that we'll see this V shape here. Uh, I mean, that's my own conclusion, but of course this is just like a crystal ball kind of thing. So we, we, we can't mm. forecast, but I think the conclusion is that it seems that there's multiple factors, but the caveat is that if government decides to go very hard here on many more policies, then I think this will like maybe really like fall back into like that. Yeah. So I think the only thing is about policy. Yeah, that's that's my if if they allow free market forces, it's gonna be like that. Mm. If they really step in very hard, it's gonna be like that. If they go in, if they step in very hard here, I think this is gonna be like that. And then this will also be like very, very flat. And then this will make Linden very happy. This is also okay like, because <laughs> it is still like an upward trend, you know, like, uh, and, and, okay, actually, yes. uh, all markets have their own form of challenges when you are trying to do your portfolio planning, right? So for example, now, yes. it is uh, good to sell, right? But sometimes, you know, like it takes longer effort uh, to find the right deal to go into because, mm. Right now, we are reaching a state where, number one, the seller's mindset and the buyer's mindset, right, is totally different. If you are saying back in 2022, first half, it's very simple. Everyone is still at a bullish mindset. Sellers think that price will go up. Buyers also think that the price will go up. So there is this FOMO. Mm. I need to take action and buy into the market. But right now, what I see in the market is two different things. Sellers think that pricing is still going to go up. Buyers think that price is going to come down because either it's pickish in terms of pricing-wise, every time the prices pick, people always think that, oh, Prices should come down, la, mm. right? Because everything must go up, must come down, la, right? But I don't believe in a uh, subscribe to that kind of uh, manner of thinking. But more because of like uh, things like interest rate have gone up 4x since last year, 1% to 4%. And what is the impact is the monthly installment will increase by 45% when interest rate go up from 1% to 4% if this is a 30 year loan. And the next thing, of course, we have like recession talks that's going on for lots of, uh, for a long time. We have four major bank collapses at the early start of the year. Mm. But no more, uh, no, no got, more musical chair la. <laughs> so which is great. No, no it seems like uh, too much about, about our median household income has increased. You know, yeah. like so buyers now are like fighting back in that sense, mm. right? So, uh, that's why I see that we are now reaching like a, uh, uh, like a new stage. 
But of course, I think overall wise, I think uh, interest rates should start to taper down because we already observed that fixed rates have already started tapering down for the last half a year already. But of course, floating rates are still climbing because of like the last three months kind of Sora. So I think all in all, in general, like regarding to this, I think overall, most importantly is that like, it's still, we, what we're trying to do is like basically, most of all is like, what is the property that you pick to put in your portfolio? Yeah. Based on this sharing, sometimes we, what we want the audience to take away is, oh, okay, I think uh, resale is better than new sale because this is more like an overall market sentiment. Correct. And yeah. a lot of times, I think we cover in our webinars, right? How we pick whether is it new launch or better or resale is better is we see specifically in that district, in that locale, right? What is your X percentage difference? If the X percentage is below a certain point, then we buy new launch. If the X percentage is below above a certain point, then we buy a resale. So we want to see your own micro segment so that we can actually put the right kind of uh, project in place. Lah, if you want to have a good outcome. Before I forget, uh, for those of you who have not watched the previous episode that we interviewed Joanna and Jervin, they actually had a plan. Um, okay, so they like you, Lyndon, mm, they went inspired. for yeah, yeah, yeah. They also got their keys late because like, the Dawson project was like, they took them about six, seven years mm. to get their keys. So, but the moment they take their key, they really apply like all the things that they have like learned learn and planned over it. Okay, firstly, they invested very little into renovation. Secondly, they rented out their rooms, built the equity. Cash flow. And they built, they built the equity basically is like really from day one. And they even built the equity in the sense that they're not even using their CPF to pay for the money installment. So that their CPF is building up the OA interest. Mm. So at the end of the five years MOP, that allowed them to really cash out from the HDB plus the profit, plus the CPF accrued interest that they earn into two prior properties. So I, I think if you have not seen the episode, do watch it because they share a lot of real life examples. Okay, sorry, uh, please remember your question. Because <laughs> yes. just now when you was talking, um, there's this five years thing that we need to talk about again. <laughs> <laughs> okay, oh. now this is a very interesting part that is happening already. And this is like coming to Melvin's favorite. Okay. Uh, for those of you who have known about these two projects, Affinity at Serangoon. Garden. Okay. Uh, Garden maybe residences. Not gardens, are real front residences. Yeah. Oh, real front. Okay, 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 okay. now of course, front residences, unfortunately, I mean, now there's a bit of delay in the, the construction. Soon, because, soon going to be TO period. Yeah, okay. So these three projects, they will all launch during this era whereby there were a lot of on blocks going on because that was a season of like HUDC on blocks. Yes. Mm. And uh, now we're at 2023, the TOP. They were launched around, is it this year? I think 2018. 2018. Okay. 2018. Eh? Yeah, 2018. 2018, 2018. Yes. right? Okay. But they took about three years to sell out. They sell out by 2021. Now they TOP already. So they started to launch in 2018. And... 2017 and 18 was the on block year. There mm. were a lot of on blocks that were happening. Mm. Then f after all the on blocks fever, a lot of GRS came out. And this few years was actually the period that uh, new launch PSF, his new high, plus the fact that there were a lot of balanced inventory in the market. So actually, if you're hunting for a new launch, you go to short flats, they will say that all oh, this is like 70% so 80% so I still have 20%. Then you can hunt for all the balanced units. Okay. What is happening right now in the market is like this. 2023 is like the year of aggressive launches, 47 new launches. Last year, there was like an on-block fever until now. But on-block now is like one out of 10. It's, it's getting harder because of the new uh, land betterment charge, DC charge and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. What's going to happen in the next few years is like this. There's going to be balance inventory that you can... Because you remember all the headline news, like all the new launches, 50% sold Grand Dunman, 43% sold. So what about the balance units? There's, it's going to spill over to 2024, 2025. And then what's going to happen is that by 2025, once all these are cleared more or less, we are back in the new era. So usually it sort of like happens in this like five year supply season. Yeah. So if you want to have these charts, do drop us an email right here. Okay. Sorry. Lyndon, back to you. Uh, I, I, I think still the first question, by the way. We want to clarify that chart also. <laughs> that, like, that chart that doesn't- toilet break? It's too much <laughs> like, bubble tea today. I'm like, oh, I need to- Not with Lyndon is fresh. That chart that Melvin showed <laughs> doesn't mean that the price will drop down. Huh? Uh, it's just the inventory Which stock. one, which one, which one? The, the chart that you showed. 
Because oh, a, lot, okay, 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 a okay. lot of my clients think that the cycle is like, oh, the property price will go up, then go down, go up, then go down. Okay, okay. Come yeah, on, so me. it's the inventory chart. Hold on, I, I, I foresee that because with Lyndon <laughs> over here, this uh, session is going to be extended. Yeah, this is not the yeah. price. Okay, can I go to the inventory room? chart? Okay, go, go, wait, go, wait, go, go. Before you go, let me ask you. Uh, then you can think about it in the <laughs> no, rest No, I don't need, I want yeah. to, you ask me. Okay, okay, very fast. Yeah. Very fast, yeah. Okay. So, right, right, we, right, you right. say that it won't be link, right? The private property and HDB. But do you think that there will be a point that private properties reach a quantum that people will just, eh, I just cannot afford? I, to me, it doesn't matter. To me, it doesn't matter. So, you see, uh, it's like, Predicting the property market, right, is like trying to predict what uh, cuts you will be dealt, right? So I always believe that I wouldn't know what cuts would be dealt to me. But what I want is to focus on what is the best strategy that I can employ to make my hand take out the, uh, to, you know, like end up the best outcome. So this is the game I play. I don't really care, you know, like how the game is going to happen. There's no point for me to try to focus on things that are super out of my control. I focus on the hand that I'm dealt with and I develop the best strategy that I can man maneuver to put myself in a better position across time. La. So to me, I only care about what properties I pick. Should I be in what region, what property type, etc. It's very hard to answer, you know, all this <laughs> stuff. Okay, okay. Yeah. you can go for your toilet. Okay, go to okay. Uh, okay while you're Thank toilet. you very much. <laughs> uh, okay. First time. Okay, so anyway, while I was going for my toilet break, right? <laughs> I just want to add on the second part of like my answer on like the hand of cards, right? It is, uh, of course, with the caveat that I find that this is a game worth playing. Like, that's why, you know, like, so of course, right, I, I still see <laughs> potential <laughs> overall in the marketplace is because number one, the, the country is well managed. Agree. The agree, country agree. is well managed. The country is still on a growth trajectory, meaning that uh, the policy makers are still thinking a way of how to improve, you know, like Singapore, how do we position ourselves better and be competitive in the global market? And this is the baseline that that is the reason why, because the country will still be growing and hence the land price will be more valuable and hence we can partake in the property investment route. So yeah. if we were to go like offline yeah. and off camera, yeah. like, and don't answer it politically yeah. correct, do you think there will be a quantum that private property will reach? Or there will it a, just keep that, growing that, and growing and growing? That, that is unaffordable. Yeah. It's, it's, it's like, I feel like sometimes, you know, like things happen beyond uh, then, a, a person's okay. imagination because actually everything, our limitation is always based on our own mindset. Mm. Right, you see? So you see, of and, course- And the history la, and what we learn from the yes, history. Yes, correct, right? So a lot of time is our own limiting beliefs, right? So mm. same thing. If you were to ask me, say like 10 years ago, let's say when, <laughs> not 10 years ago. Okay, 10 years ago, like, let's say like, you know what, it's my age when I, uh, like my graduation age, uh -huh. right? And you tell me so that- So how old are you And now? you tell me that 10 years later, 35, like 10 years later- You graduated uh, at 25. No, I, I, I drop out of uh, university, right? So anyway, uh, okay, I'm just saying okay. like generally, at that point of time, what is the average starting income of a graduate? And if you ask me then, well, I think that one day, let's say in like five to 10 years time, the the graduation, like you know, the, the, the income nowadays, sometimes a fresh grad can be mm. earning $6,000, $8,000, $9,000. Of course, depending on the segment they are in, right? Okay. So what I'm saying is that like, in any point of time, I've never heard of somebody tell me that property prices are cheap one at their era. It's always expensive mm. because it's always relative to that income affordability and the down payment and the cash that they can utilize. But 10 years down the road or 20 years down the road, their children will always tell them, hey, I wish that my parents or grandparents, they should have done this at that time so cheap. Now more expensive, right? Mm. But in relative, uh, you know, retrospectively, we think about it, at any point of time, it is always expensive to the person that yeah, wants to enter. Because we, can, we just yeah. cannot visualize what is the price quantum 10 yeah. years later. It, it will yeah. just like blew off out, out of our mind. <laughs> so, so today you say, you, 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 you mentioned no, the I'm not asking quantum, for right? quantum. Like, do you think it will reach a quantum that people just say, I cannot afford and I cannot buy? Okay. okay. When I started real estate 16 years ago, <laughs> the average price of a three beta is 650000 Four beta is like 800,000. Okay. It's like, when when I talk to buyers on the ground, 800,000 is like very expensive. Yeah. Mm. It's like, it's not easy to afford. And then lender property is like a million mm. into terrace. 
And people are saying like, it's very unaffordable, very expensive, you know, and, and all that kind of stuff. So I think it's very hard to visualize what's going to happen in 10 years because maybe, maybe <laughs> what's going to happen to a normal three bidder is going to be like 3 million. We, yeah. we, we cannot visualize. I know, I, I, I think 3 million will definitely be there. It's just a matter of time. Yeah. The only uh, reason of like why it won't be there is if you assume that the country, let's say as a business, you know, like it is, it's not growing mm. anymore. And hence income is stagnant or income is re decreasing. Our competitiveness across, you know, like in terms of productivity reduced, then of course then I think Okay, everything and one more thing is like, that you have so much land that you can just keep building and yeah. building and building. Yeah. Because you yeah. just look at certain countries, it's because of the fact that you can, they can just keep building and building and building. That's why the mm. price do not increase. Mm. It's like you can, you have like an unlimited inventory yeah. that you can continue and, to And the up. buyers will always hunt for the brand new ones. Mm. Yeah. They will put the resale as a second priority because I can just buy the brand new one. Because anyway, anything that's launched is still around the same price. And I think something very interesting that I really like is that we have a lot of leasehold properties in Singapore. What do you and mean? It is because it is a leasehold property as compared to other major cities who are like, you know, like they have houses that are freehold land, right? It allows that, the it, it allows not to like, you know, I have too much of this old money. You know, like the, the rich continue to own prime location. It is freehold. Yeah. They cannot be refreshed. But when it's 99 years, it allows opportunity to inject new life into spaces because once it ends, this land will go back to the government as long as this, like the country, like a business is well hot. managed. You, you cannot, cannot hot, right? So it's not old money. So what happens is that they can always redevelop, have better usage that continue to uh, keep pace with what, what is required at that point of time. Of time. Uh, what is the, what kind of needs? And so I, I, I really love like the leasehold property thing. So you got a hot wealth. Uh, yeah. To a certain extent, it gives the new generation better, better chance. La. That means- Yeah. To participate. The again. easiest, I mean, it's not say the easiest. I mean like the Still most got likely place that uh, investors are hoarding wealth is in landed. Yes, yes, because you are right. Because majority are free properties. Yes, you are I, right. You are right. I feel, I feel that uh, ultimately we have to understand that Singapore is still very young. Uh, when we are talking about old money, we are not talking like three, four generations or so. Like when you are in Rome or like in, you know, in European countries where you have, like our old money is like, Still new one, money. One generation, it's, it's, one and a half generation. We're not even one generation. We so are, are 1965. We are, I, I'm definitely celebrating that. I've already hung my flag outside my, my window. <laughs> no, you're moving already, man. No, no, no. I hung it outside my current, my parents' place. Oh, where are you moving in? I'm Petrotic. moving in probably end of September. Okay. Yeah. Will you invite us for housewoman? But definitely, definitely. I'll invite you all. <laughs> we can do a webinar there. We can post a new NOTG with the backdrop of, uh, of MBS. Okay. He's very yes. entertaining. Eh. He's very <laughs> entertaining. Eh. But 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 let, let, let me go back. Like Singapore is still very young in properties. Mm. We have only had two lands, not even two lands. One land that was taken back by the government when it reached zero. Oh yeah. The, Gelang Gelang one, the second one yeah. is coming up next year. Which one? Uh I think it's at uh in that area also. Also in Geelang. I think it's McPherson or oh, okay. yeah, there's one Galang more. Or what? There's one more. I think left like 10 of us is the the plot behind Railway Correct. Mall. And and a lot of a lot of people, I think we have to go into the point that Singapore is only what, 40, 60. 58 years already. No, 1965, what? Yeah, 58, lah. This 58. year is 50, This year is 58. 58. Uh, 58 years. Oh, yes. I still need to count. Yes. I thought you were very patriotic. So 58 years. Because I drove past Bradhall and the <laughs> residents there are so patriotic because they just like put up like a have you hung your, your, no, your flag with the word 58 there. Have you hung your flag? No. <laughs> My wife will do it. La. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so we are still very young. Uh, we have not reached a point that, you know, our land, our house has gone through like one, two, three, four generations. We don't have old money. So what do you think is going to happen? Or like OBS? In, 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 your, in your perspective, what do you think is going to happen uh, maybe in like 30 years time where we are 88 years old and then you've got to see a lot of the 99 property with like a balance, like example, Mandarin Garden in 30 years time, they will be like 20 over years. In 30 years time, balance I'm 61 years old. <laughs> you will be 61 years yes, old. I'll be very old already. What, what do you think is going to happen to all this like 99's property? I feel that it will, it will really just go back to the will government. Will cause people to panic? It will really just go back to the government and the landed people that owns the freehold will become the old money. 
Actually, it doesn't really yeah. matter because so, most of the time the, the, the owners will expire before the, the, the land expire. And yeah. probably it will be passed down to like a second generation. Yep. They either will have sold before it become zero or they will have keep it as a rental income. Mm. So I think it's totally okay because any inheritance do not attract additional buyer stamp duty. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so... Or they will just sell it and somebody will still buy it because you just have a look at the cluster of landed properties behind real mall. Mm. Mm. Left, I, I don't know, like 10 plus <coughs> million years. I'm not sure the exact balance mm. lease, mm. but it's still fully occupied. Yeah, mm. Those because, will be full cash purchases yeah. for like people who are retiring. They know yeah. that I like, only need that number of years. Yeah, like, like people maybe in their 60s, they sold off like an $8 million landed, $10 million, $6 million, just pay off like a one $2 million landed. Mm. They stay there for 15, 20 years. And I mean, as long as you don't go and spend money to rebuild, la, right? Mm. You just buy something, renovate a bit, you can stay, mm. enjoy the space. But I think the government has already also put in a lot of like policies to potentially refresh uh, buildings even before the lease ends up. So for example, uh, we introduced VERS, which is Voluntary and Block Scheme for HDB owners. So when it reaches balance 30 years, of course, it's still some runway to go to, to, to see what happens. Mm-hmm. The community can decide whether they want to go for selective and block for HDB perspective. Right. And of course, in the CBD area, we also introduce what we call the CBD incentive scheme, where we sort of like incentivize building owners who fall within certain uh, stretches that, that uh, the government has sort of like drawn out, right? If you decide to redevelop your building, to, uh, closer to the leaf work play kind of anger uh, approach for the CBD transformation, you will have like incentive to have additional 20% gross floor area that you can build to incentivize uh, building owners to refresh and keep up to date to provide spaces that uh, Singaporeans will need to continue to, uh, to continue to be productive. So I think that's mm. awesome. Uh, anyway, I don't think we can continue the rest because it's uh, just one topic is really one hour already. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so we need to have a part two. So uh, let's then let's arrange for a part two. Linda will come okay. back then we'll continue the rest. <laughs> I, I look forward to Nicole's I, I, I uh, morning more text every day. Oh, so you can yes. read the news. Oh, huh? yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, Because it's, it's more like I don't want to open the newspaper and like try to go through whatever yeah, is yeah. applicable. Right, 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 right. Awesome. Okay. And you're very entertaining oh. eh. Yeah, no. let's do let's do a part two. Uh, yeah, we should do a part two. Then uh, let's get in one more person. Yes, we should get. Ben, you cannot tell eh. You're good eh. <laughs> Not bad, very natural. Uh, we... I think you can take over Grace ah. Uh. Can you take over me? <laughs> I like you. I like you. Debates. No, anyhow la. Debate with you. <laughs> <laughs> hey, come on. <laughs> this is not a debate. Guys, uh, I think we were really overrun because by right, what I wanted to do. <laughs> was to talk about like home ownership, the percentage, the fact that uh, we're now more expensive than Hong Kong. Then we're going to talk about this curb residential and commercial land. Yeah, I thought we were just going to continue. We're also going to talk about ABSD, Americans uh, overtaking Chinese as top foreign buyers for Q2. And this hot news, court rejects father's claim that house held in trust for some was applauded over, okay. over ABSD. And plus this, sad news about decoupling. Shall we, the shall we set up one episode for, for next week to shoot? Yes. Now. Let's, let's do it now. Let's now? open the calendar now. No, I'm just going to do my outro. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he needs to do the outro. This, this is the <laughs> outro. Why are you interrupting me? <laughs> Sorry. I thought you were going to say bye already. Then we have an outro. I thought you were just like chit-chatting, you know? Okay, okay. Oh so because God. of uh, time constraint, because now we have a new person coming in, Linden, there's a change of dynamics and... Uh, <laughs> He talked too much. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. <laughs> okay, he, he brought a lot of uh, new things to the table. And of course, uh, <laughs> there was a lot of uh, he- uh, heaty discussion today. But uh, I think fantastic. I hope that you, you take away great things because we want to bring new people, new brains, new perspectives to the table so everybody can learn and enjoy. So we're going to have part two and uh, we're going to bring Linda and Yurong back. See you on the next round. Okay. My neck is painful today. Is that- <laughs> I cannot laugh. You need to look the right. So that means you cannot look me. Special. Linden special. Yeah. I spent four hours reading. No, I mean, the things have been. I read every single word. Eh. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, try guess. What is Melvin going to talk about?